of, this is a huge win for the people of New York. They spoke, they've been working very, very hard on this issue, they've been educating themselves, and today we are the first state in the nation, the first nation in the world to stand up against the dangers of hydrofracking. And I think it's very important that you people understand that you did this. The system does work. Millions of dollars came in against us and the hard work that we've been doing, and we still beat it, okay? I don't care how anyone characterizes this. We won, but it's the first game in the playoffs, all right? And we still got plenty of games ahead of us. And so, step by step, inch by inch, we're gonna get what we need, we're gonna get what we want, we're gonna get what we asked for. I talked to the governor this Friday before he did this moratorium. And it was a very good conversation. But I have to say, when the issue of vertical wells came up, he had no idea that the wells in Dimmick that poisoned their water were vertical wells. And that is a huge misperception. And I personally would like today to introduce to Governor Patterson, to the people of New York, Craig and Julie Sautner, whose wells were destroyed and poisoned in Dimmick. These are the people who are behind all of the talk. These are the people who have suffered from vertical wells, okay? Hi, my name's Craig Sautner. This is my wife, Julie. We live on Carter Road in Dimmick, Pennsylvania. It's also known as Ground Zero for water well contamination after drilling for natural gas in the area. We were the first well contaminated. That was back in September 11th of 08. And I just want to uh, thank Governor Patterson for signing the bill. This is a huge victory for everybody. And it's going to send a message to the rest of the United States. This isn't just for New York. This will go nationwide with this, with this bill. Around the world. Around the world even, yes, because we've had people come from all countries to come to Dimmick to find out what's going on with the fracking and the drilling. Let them clean up their messes. I mean, if these gas companies are going to come in here and do the things that they do, they have to be held accountable for what they do. They cannot destroy the water. Dimmick is going to be a wasteland if they don't clean up the mess they got there. So, you guys, and it's all because of all these people here, all over the state, all over the country, that are putting in the, all the time, the effort, and the work to get this done. And, you know, it is working. And it will keep on working and get better. First and foremost, this is a victory, and that's the, the message, the, the takeaway message from today. We are the first state that has told the big oil and gas companies, you can't come in, you can't put our health and our natural resources at risk unless you can show us that it can be done safely. And so we're going to do the studies now, we're going to find out exactly what's at risk and whether those risks can be addressed. Unfortunately, in getting us there, Governor Patterson created what we started to call the Patterson loophole, in that he has allowed vertical wells in the same shales, the Marcellus and Utica, that are currently being studied by the state to evaluate whether drilling can be done safely because of his prior order. The issue is that is twofold. First of all, when the bill was first being discussed, industry threatened that if horizontal drilling in the Marcellus and Utica shales was banned, they would come in and drill up to 16 vertical wells per square mile in lieu of horizontal wells. And that was their way of trying to scare the legislature out of passing any moratorium bill. And the legislature said, we'll call your bluff on that. No vertical wells in the Marcellus or Utica either. The second concern is that it does an end run around the very environmental review process that Governor Patterson put into place. Because there is a risk, as Senator Kruger referred to, that companies come in and drill vertical wells legally and then come back to the state and say, we want to convert these to horizontal wells. And once they're in the ground, it's very hard for the state to say no. And that does an end run around the very environmental review process that the governor put into place to protect the people of New York. So we're here today to say we're watching the industry and any attempt to do an end run around the environmental review process is not going to go unnoticed. 
We are looking to the governor-elect and to the incoming legislature to close the loophole and to make sure that all New Yorkers are protected against the risks of hydraulic fracturing without adequate regulations and safeguards in place. We need to ensure the safety of all 19 million New Yorkers and their water supply. Now, that's, the, that's what we don't talk about. Who's going to pay for the problems? We are. Cabot has refused, the industry has refused across the board to take responsibility for the places where they have made problems. Every single place they've done it, they've refused to take responsibility. And who's going to end up shouldering the bill? It's the taxpayers. And then how do you offset that against what is actually coming in in revenue? I mean, $12 million for nine square miles of drilling, uh, I don't, I'm not sure it's going to add up, you know?